Hello and welcome to this short tutorial on how to use our neural network implementation of a user material subroutine or UMAT for Abacus. This work was in collaboration with Dr. Uelang and Dr. Sarah Calvi. To describe the mechanical behavior of a compressible or nearly incompressible isotropic hyperelastic material, a strain energy function is needed. In a decoupled formulation, the total energy can be split into an isochoric and a volumetric contribution, as shown here, where I1 and I2 bar are the first two isochoric invariants of the left or the right Cauchy green deformation tensor, and J is the determinant of the deformation gradient. In case you are not familiar with hyperelasticity or would like to know more, then this is a good reference to consult. Typically, analytical expressions are used for these strain energy functions. And here we propose to use a fully connected neural network to represent the strain energy function and its derivatives. So basically what we want is a neural network that takes in as inputs the two isochoric invariants, I1 and I2, and outputs the derivatives of the strain energy or the isochoric part of the strain energy with respect to the isochoric invariants. So having a neural network that can do this, we have packaged this neural network into a user material subroutine that can then be used in a finite element simulation. And there, there are many other calculations that take place inside of the UMAT, not just this evaluation of the derivatives of the strain energy as a function of the invariance, but some, some other calculations are done. We are, I'm not going to cover this in, in this video, but if you are curious about uh, how to develop UMATs in general, this is a very, very good paper that was recently published that covers precisely how to develop user material subroutines for Abacus. For using our user material subroutine, the only thing that you do need to get a little bit familiar with is how a neural network works. Let's consider the neural network shown in the figure, which has multiple layers. Let's consider layer I, which has M neurons, and layer I plus one, which has N neurons. And let's say that we want to know what the output is after this layer I plus one. What are the calculations that need to be performed in order to get this output? These are the calculations that are done to calculate the output from the layer I plus one. Uh, the input first is the output from the previous layer. So yi is the m-dimensional output from layer i. That one is the first thing that we need. And that gets multiplied by this matrix of weights, uh, which is an m by n matrix of the weights between layers i and i plus 1. After this multiplication, then we add this vector of biases and that one is an n-dimensional vector because layer i plus 1 has n neurons. After adding these biases, then we evaluate this activation function for this vector, and we have coded the ReLU function, but other functions uh, could be implemented. And then after evaluating this activation function, then we get finally our n-dimensional output vector from the layer i plus 1. So this is the basic thing that you need to know about neural networks in order to fully specify the neural network in the input file and use our UMAT. So the things that you will need to specify in the input file are the total number of layers, including the input and the output layers, the number of additional inputs uh, with respect to the, just the I1 and I2 inputs. As I mentioned before, the neural network has to take in these two isochoric invariance and output the derivatives. But if you train your neural network with additional inputs, not just I1 and I2, that is totally fine, but you need to specify that in the input file. So for example, the neural network that you see here ha has four inputs in the first input layer. So that means that the last two inputs will be the I1 and I2, but the first two inputs, we have to specify those in the input file because when we train our neural network, we use these two other inputs. So it's fine, but it needs to be specified in the input file. Then the total number of weights and biases, the number of neurons per layer, and then you also need to 
pass these normalizing parameters for I1 and I2. So if you can see here, actually what the neural network evaluates is I1 hat and I2 hat. And that's just because when we trained our neural networks, we normalized the input. So in the input file, you need to pass this mean and variance for the normalization of the I1 and I2. I1 bar and I2 bar will be calculated automatically in the UMAT, but for evaluation of the neural network, I1 bar and I2 bar are not used directly, but rather the normalized I1, so I1 hat and I2 are used. So you need to pass in the input file this mean and variance for the normalization. So if you train your neural network directly with I1 bar and I2 bar, then you don't need to normalize. So you can just pass a mean of zero and a variance of one, and that will be fine. So this normalizing constants, then the bulk modulus, because this is a decoupled formulation, so you need a bulk modulus. Then you need to pass the, the value of the inputs in addition to the I1 and I2. As I mentioned, you need to specify that there's two additional inputs and the value of those two inputs. Then all the weights, all the biases, then the activation function flag. And like I mentioned, when you train your neural network, it has to take in the invariance of the deformation and output the derivatives of the strain energy with respect to the deformation inva invariance. So an example of how this will work, consider this neural network shown in the picture. It has five layers, four inputs, and two outputs, which have to be the derivatives of the strain energy. So how would this be specified in the input file? So this is how the input file would look like, and I'll walk you through piece by piece. So the first thing that needs to be defined is the total number of layers. So in this case, five layers, including the input. Then the neural network in the UMAT already knows that it has to have two inputs for I1 and I2 but it could have more inputs. So in this case, there's two additional inputs. Then the total number of weights and biases gets specified. Then the actual architecture of the neural network. So how many neurons per layer? In this case, four, eight, eight, 16, and two neurons in each layer. Then as I mentioned, uh, because when we train our neural networks, we normalized the inputs we no need to pass these normalizing parameters. So the mean and the variance for I1 and I2. If you trained your neural network without normalizing the inputs, then here you would just put one, sorry, zero, one, zero, one. So zero mean and variance of one. That's what you would put if you didn't normalize your inputs during the training of your, of your neural network. Then the bulk modulus, then the value of the additional inputs, again, as I mentioned, the neural network has to have at least two inputs, which are I1 and I2, but it could have more inputs. In this case, you can see that there's four inputs. So the last two will be I1 and I2. And the first two, the value of those first two inputs needs to be specified in the input file. So in this case, the value of these first two inputs is zero, zero. So that's why it needs to be specified in the input file. Then all the weights, all the biases, and the flags for the activation function. In our case, zero is the ReLU function, and one is the identity function, meaning nothing is done to the, to the output. Um, and yeah, that's it. So the, these are all the things. Uh, if you pass this information, this essentially is defining the neural network. And this is what we used in a couple of examples. So if you go to the code, I'll, I'll put the link in the next slides. But this is how you would run it. You would call Abacus for your job, the input, you pass your input file. The input file looks exactly the same as any other input file. It's just that in the user, uh, in the material specification, you need to have the structure that I showed in the previous slide and then you need to pass the user material subroutine. Um, so for example, if you run this file that is provided, I'll, I'll put the link in the next um, slide, then this is what you would get as an output. Uh, this is just one example. There's this other example with the shear deformation that you can check out. 
And as I mentioned, all the, the code is available. Here's the link. And then this is, this is also the preprint link. And that one has a little bit more details about what specific application we were considering. Uh, but yeah, the, the code will work not just for this particular application of fibrin gel mechanics, but in general, if you just have a neural network that takes in the deformation invariance and outputs the derivatives of the string energy, you can use our UMAT. And that's all I have. Thank you very much. Uh, this is my lab at Purdue University, and this was also work with the Calvi lab at uh, University of Colorado Boulder. And in particular, this work was mostly done by Dr. Ewer Lang. Thank you.